Ilhan Omar is in trouble again, and she's doubling down on her being in trouble because she is not good at this. Also, she's not a very good person. So there are a few different things that are wrong with Ilhan Omar's take on 9-11. So she begins, th this all came to light over the past few days because she was speaking at the Council on American Islamic Relations. We played the clip several times. And while she was there, she suggested that care was founded in the aftermath of 9-11, not true, to defend Muslims after some people did something. And people were, who remember 9-11 said to themselves, what now? Some people did something? That's, that's your hot take? Some people did something? And she defended this, not by suggesting that she may have been insensitive in her remarks, or that's not what she meant, or obviously 9-11 was a truly terrible tragedy for the country and an act of tremendous evil. Right? All the things that you would expect a person to say in this position. Instead, she simply keeps doubling down on all of this. Like over and over and over again. So, for example, Ilhan Omar tweeted out this morning, she tweeted out this morning in response to all of this, quote, the people and the people who knocked these buildings down will hear from all of us soon. President George W. Bush. Was Bush downplaying the terrorist attack? What if he was a Muslim? What in the living hell is that supposed to mean? First off, let's analyze that quote from President Bush. I remember him saying that. You remember him saying that, if you are older than 17 years old, because he was standing on the rubble of Ground Zero at the time with a bullhorn and explaining to people that the people who perpetrated the attack would soon be dead because we would be sending our soldiers overseas to kill them. That's what he meant by that. The people who knocked those buildings down will hear from all of us soon was not him saying we're going to call them and then have a nice conversation. That was not, that was not the idea. The idea was the evil people who knocked down these buildings are going to hear from us in the form of missiles. Was Bush downplaying the terrorist attack? No, you doof. He wasn't downplaying the terrorist attack. And I love her take. What if he was a Muslim? Right. The real victims, the real victims of 9-11 were the Muslims, obviously. The real victims of 9-11 across the United States were Muslims. Now, I am old enough to remember all of this going down. And the media's chief concern, one of their chief concerns in the aftermath of 9-11 was the so-called Islamophobic backlash, which did not end up materializing. There was a lot of worry about Muslims being mistreated across the country. That did not end up materializing. And George W. Bush went out of his way over and over and over to separate Islam from the terrorists. I think he went overboard by characterizing Islam as a religion of peace, for example. I don't think he's an Islamic scholar, so I don't think that he had the expertise to do that. But he obviously was attempting to protect innocent Muslims from being lumped in with radical Muslims who had committed the terrorist atrocities. And yet Ilhan Omar continues with this narrative that Muslims were, were truly victimized on 9-11 as opposed to the people who were murdered in the 9-11 terror attacks. So you want to prove that you are sympathetic to the victims of 9-11 and your first response to all of this is to downplay 9-11 again by suggesting that if he that, that the real issue here is whether Bush was treated differently because he was not a Muslim guy. What in the living hell? Now, most Democrats are running for the hills. They're nowhere to be found. They won't comment on this stuff. The reason they won't comment on this stuff is because they are afraid of ticking off the fresh faces of the Democratic Party. You know, the ones who are drawing all the attention. Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, who have formed the three dragons of the radical left. And most Democrats are, are refusing comments on this. They're running for the hills. They don't want anything to do with the comments, but they also don't want to tick off these three young women who are the new fresh faces, so fresh, so face, of the Democratic Party. A couple exceptions. There is a top Democrat named Lujan who came out and said, yeah, this is not great stuff. This is, this is you know, she, she needs to do better than that. Those statements were not only hurtful to me, but extremely hurtful to everyone that was personally impacted by those terrorist attacks. Uh, no one should refer to uh, what happened on 9-11 with terrorist attacks that killed thousands of Americans as something by some people. OK, that that person is the assistant speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, Representative Ben Ray Lujan from New Mexico. Now, he is obviously right, but you're not hearing this overwhelmingly from the Democratic Party. Instead, what you're mostly hearing in the media is all of Ilhan Omar's radical friends, including anti-Semites like Rashida Tlaib and anti-Semite fellow travelers like AOC, come out and defend Ilhan Omar because they're the new diverse freshman class. Ooh. So here's Rashida Tlaib suggesting that the real problem here is that people don't like Ilhan Omar because she is a Somali woman of Muslim who, who is a Muslim. I'm not for policing people. You know, that's what they're doing to us women of color. I mean, think about it. 
This is a diverse class. Uh, they've never had two Muslim women. They've never had a Palestinian American. They've never had a woman that was a refugee. I mean, these are real life, impactful stories that come with us because our lens is so different. You know, this is not just about a Congress that looks differently, but we serve differently and we talk about these issues differently. But it's an institution that just is not ready for people like us. Oh, that's it. It, it must be it must be the color of skin or the character of, of genitalia. It must be that you're a female or that you are Muslim or that you have a darker shade, a darker hue of skin color. It must be that not the open anti-Semitism that both you and Ilhan Omar repeatedly engage in. It can't be that Omar is a radical on foreign policy, which she is. Muslim or not, she is a radical on foreign policy. I will show you the evidence of this in just one second. But it must be that the criticism is all, it's all related to race. Now, weird, because there are other Muslims in the U.S. Congress, and they don't receive this kind of criticism because they don't say this kind of crap. There are other black people. There are other people who are of brown hue in the U.S. Congress who do not receive this kind of blowback because they're not routinely saying things that are disgusting in public. But it must be racism and sexism and bigotry and homophobia and all the rest. Leading this charge, of course, is AOC, who spends every waking moment trying to defend idiocy by suggesting that opponents of idiocy are actually opponents of minorities. Here she is saying the same thing. She says that, that criticism of Ilhan Omar, if you critique Ilhan Omar, you're inciting people to racist violence. And then Ilhan Omar said the exact same thing. To elicit such an image for such a transparent lead and politically motivated attack on Ilhan, this is, we are getting to the level where, the, where this is an incitement of violence against progressive women of color. And if they can't figure out how to get it back to policy, we need to call it out for what it is, because this is not normal, and this is not a normal level of pro political debate or rhetoric. It's incitement. It's incitement against, wi against women of color. Incitement, really. So the rule now is that if you criticize a member of Congress who happens to be a woman of color, it's incitement? And that, that this is the speech is violence nonsense that you see on college campuses where people like me go to speak on college campuses or Michael Moles goes and speaks on a college campus. And suddenly people are popping up and actually attempting violence because speech, after all, is violence. If the new standard is that harshly critiquing somebody is incitement to violence, then you know who's going to be responsible for violence? Ilhan Omar. Not two weeks ago, she suggested that Donald Trump was not a human. She said Barack Obama was a human, but Donald Trump is not a human. Which is worse, saying that Ilhan Omar said a terrible thing about 9-11 or that she downplayed 9-11 and that she said terrible things about America repeatedly? Or is it worse to call Donald Trump not human, to dehumanize a person by calling them not human? Which was more inciting? Which one? Here's Ilhan Omar saying that two weeks ago. I just want to get to your side of the story. Do you believe that Trump and Obama are the same, just different when it comes to their policies? We understand that you refute this political story. Could you just set the record straight so we get your side of it? Do you think that President Obama is the same as President Absolutely Trump? Absolutely not. That is silly to even think and equate the two. One is human, the other is human. Is it true that you just think that he's more polished than Trump? One is human, the other is not. Okay, which one is more inciting, that or people pointing out that Ilhan Omar's comments about 9-11 were at best insensitive, at best. It's pretty, it's pretty incredible. AOC went even further than this. Again, it is amazing to me that people see her as an intellectual leader of her party. If this is the case, sell your bonds because my goodness, AOC tweeted this out about Dan Crenshaw. So Dan Crenshaw is one of the people who's been critical of Ilhan Omar's comments about 9-11, Representative Crenshaw from Texas, served in Afghanistan, lost an eye to an IED in Afghanistan, did that defending Muslims in Afghanistan. So AOC tweets this out at Dan Crenshaw. So Dan Crenshaw had tweeted, first member of Congress to ever describe terrorists who killed thousands of Americans on 9-11 as some people who did something. Unbelievable. AOC responds, you refuse to co-sponsor the 9-11 Victims Compensation Fund, yet have the audacity to drum resentment toward Ilhan Omar with completely out-of-context quotes. In 2018, right-wing extremists were behind almost all U.S. domestic terrorist killings. Why don't you go do something about that? So there are about eight lies in here. Number one, he backs the 9-11 Victims Compensation Fund. So does Donald Trump, to the extent that even Jon Stewart has praised the Trump administration for their work on the 9-11 Victims Compensation Fund. Number two, you don't have to co-sponsor a bill to support a bill. Three, she's really going to suggest that people like Ilhan Omar are doing more for 9-11 victims than Dan Crenshaw, who joined the military and lost an eye to fight the people who perpetrated 9-11? That, 
that's your take? While you were dancing on a rooftop and mixing drinks, that dude was over in Afghanistan serving and getting his eye blown out by an IED? That's your hot take? <laughs> it's, it's unreal. 